Hey, it's me, Mr. Jason. Now, before we get into our video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button as well as that notification bell so that you know whenever we upload. Also, don't forget to comment down below a book that you would like for us to read together. I love requests, and when I get requests, that lets me know that you're out there listening and watching, and we love that here at Read Aloud with Mr. Jason. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And don't forget, keep reading. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Mr. Jason, and today I have a read aloud for you. Welcome back to another episode of Read Aloud with Mr. Jason. Man, I missed you guys, but I'm so happy that you're back to read another story with us. We have a great story for you. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to all of the subscribers out there for helping us reach our thousandth subscriber on YouTube. We are making big strides this year, and I can't wait to read and reach those goals with all of you. So thank you to the watchers, thank you to the listeners, thank you to the book requesters, thank you to everyone that left a comment. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. So for that, I say thank you. The seasons are changing from cold to warm. From here we call that winter to springtime. The flowers are starting to bloom, the sun is starting to shine more, the rain is starting to come down even more. So. I felt it appropriate for our story to be today, From Seed to Plant, written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. With simple language and bright illustrations, Gail Gibbons introduced young readers to the processes of pollination, seed formation, and germination. Important vocabulary is reinforced with accessible explanation and colorful clear diagrams showing the parts of plants and wide variety of seeds and how they grow. As we read our story, keep those eyes open for the sight words that you see here on our list. Also for the parents and the teachers that are watching, here are a few key developmental indicators this particular story teaches. Oh, stick around to the end of the story, because we have a little project of how to turn seeds into plants. And we also have a few fun facts about plants that you probably didn't know. So, see you then. In our description down below, we have helpful tips of how to grow and care for all the plants, vegetables, and fruits that we talked about today in our story. I'd like to thank thespruce.com for all the great information. So... Be sure to check out the links down below in thespruce.com. If you're looking to have a bit of a green thumb this spring, this is a great website for you and your little ones. Without any further ado, let's get into our story. From Seed to Plant, written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons in Read Aloud with Mr. Jason. From Seed to Plant, written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. Most plants make seeds. A seed contains the beginning of a new plant. Seeds are different shapes, sizes, and colors. All seeds grow into the same kind of plant that made them. Many plants grow flowers. Flowers are where most seeds begin. A flower is made up of many parts. You have your petals, your stigma, your pollen, your stamens, your stem, your sepals, your ovals, and your pistils. The sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma. Stamens make yellow powder called pollen. The parts of the flower around the pistil are the stamens. At the bottom of the pistil are tiny egg cells called ovals. In the center of the flower is the pistil. Before a seed can begin to grow, 
A grain of pollen from the stamen must land on the stigma at the top of the pistil of a flower like itself. This is called pollination. Pollination happens in different ways. Often, wind blows pollen from flower to flower. Bees, other insects, and hummingbirds help pollinate too. While they visit flowers from their sweet juice called nectar, pollen rubs on their bodies. Then, they carry the pollen to another flower where it comes off onto its pistils. If a pollen grain from a flower lands on the pistils of the same kind of flower, it grows a long tube through the pistil into the oval. This is the beginning of a seed. The seeds grow inside the flower, even as the flower begins to die. As the seeds become bigger, a fruit or pod grows around them. The fruit or pod protects the seed. Some pods or fruits open and the seeds pop out. Sometimes, when the birds eat berries, they drop the seeds. Other seeds fall into streams, ponds, rivers, or the ocean. There, they travel on the water until they stick to dirt along a shore. The wind scatters seeds. Some seeds have fluff on them that let them float to the ground like tiny parachutes. Others have wings that spin as they fall. Animals help scatter seeds too. They hide acorns and nuts in the ground. Some seeds have hooks that stick to the fur of the animals or people's clothes. Later, they drop off onto the ground. A flower bed or a vegetable garden is beautiful. Seeds are planted to grow in the gardens. The seeds come in small envelopes or boxes. Directions explain how to plant the seeds and care for the plants. The beginning of a plant is curled up inside each seed. Food is stored inside the seed too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. A seed will not sprout until certain things happen. First it must be on or in the soil. Then it needs rain to soak the seed and soften the seed's coat. When the sun shines and warms the ground, the seed coat breaks open and the seed begins to grow. This is called germination. A root grows down into the soil. The root takes in water and the minerals from the soil for food. Up grows a shoot. Green leaves grow up from the shoot towards the sun. The plant grows bigger and bigger. The leaves make food for the plant from the water and the minerals in the soil, the sunlight and the air all around the plant. Finally, the plant is full grown. Buds on the plant open into flowers where new seeds will grow. Many of the foods people eat are seeds, fruits, and pods. They are full of nutrition, vitamins, and minerals, and they are tasty too. Thank you so much for reading another wonderful story with me. I had a blast reading with you as I always do. I hope you learned something new about seeds and plants and how those seeds can turn into those plants and how you are the biggest component to making that happen. We all should be self-sufficient, growing our own foods, preparing our own foods. That way, we'll save money and learn new skills. Thank you for reading with me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below of a book that you would like for us to read. We love requests here that lets us know that you're watching and you're listening. And don't forget to continue sharing. Like we said earlier in the video, we've reached our thousand subscriber and we're steadily climbing thanks to you. So continue to share and continue reading. Thank you again for reading with me and I can't wait to read again with you soon. And don't forget, Keep reading. Well, thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope that you had your pen and your paper out to write down all those good facts about seeds and plants. Well, if you didn't, here is a recap of how to turn a seed into a plant. Here, we have how to raise bean plants. First step, find a clean glass jar. Take a piece of black construction paper and roll it up. Step two, 
Slide the paper into the jar. Fill the jar with water. Step three, wedge the bean seeds between the black paper and the glass. Put the jar in a warm place. Step four, in a few days, the seeds will begin to sprout. Watch the roots grow down. The shoots will grow up. Step five, put dirt into a big clay pot. Step six, carefully remove the small plants from the glass jar. Place them in the soil, covering them up to the base of the shoots. And finally, step seven, water them and watch them grow. All right, boys and girls, moms and dads, teachers and caregivers, here are a few extra fun facts about seeds and plants. Scientists who study plants are called botanists. Some seeds sprout only in the heat of a forest fire. Some plants live for only one season. They are called annuals. The other plants die at the end of the season but grow back the following year. They are called perennials. Plants in the desert, such as cactus plants, store water in their stems. They can live for a long time without rain. Mountain plants are short so that the wind can't blow them over. Plants move. Many flowers open in the morning and shut at night. Some close when it rains. Also, plants move toward light. Some plants eat insects. These plants live in soil that doesn't have enough minerals for food. The biggest flower in the world grows on the island of Sumatra. It can weigh up to 25 pounds and can be four feet across. <laughs>